Hi, I'm Dia and you guys are watching Dia Nosa. So today I'm going to talk about my predictions for the SPFBO8 finalists. So as you guys know I did one announcement video talking about how I want to read all the finalists of the uh, self published fantasy blog of finalists which is a contest uh, arranged by Mark Lawrence the author of um, Red Sister the book of the ancestor prince of thoughts and all these books anyway so uh, I made the announcement video talking about how I am planning to read all the books in the uh, finalist list and today I just wanted to have fun and I wanted to create a video talking about which books I feel that I'm gonna like the most and which ones I think I'm gonna like okay okay so let's get on with it first book I have is Small Miracles by Olivia Atwater so I'm not gonna talk about what the books are about because that's gonna make the video very long and also I don't have my phone with me I film on my phone so I didn't write down what the books are about because that would have taken so much time and I'm lazy you guys I'm lazy Anyway, so Olivia Atwater, I've read her Regency romance uh, book called Half a Soul and I liked the book but I felt that the uh, message was kind of heavy handed like I felt like I was being hammered on the head with the message or something like that. So that's why I'm kind of, I'm kind of scared to read this book because I feel like it will be too much you know like twee and whimsical and too cutesy kind of like house on the cerulean sea which did not work for me and i am kind of scared to read this book i mean i want this book to absolutely surprise me and become one of my all-time favorites because that's how i go into books like i expect the book to completely surprise me and become my all-time favorite because you know i'm a glass half full kind of a person so yeah i mean this book might just become my favorite book of the year or something but let's see i'm kind of scared uh, about this book so next we have scales and sensibility by stephanie burgess scales and sensibility so when i first saw the name and the cover i was like no this is not for me <laughs> because i don't like regency romance and regency romance with a dragon though it sounds cute and fun i don't do cute and fun that often like house in the cerulean sea did not work for me and although legends and artists worked for me it was not overtly cute like it was not trying too hard and i feel with the name and the cover and everything of this book i feel that the book might try too hard to be you know cutesy and fun and all that at number 10 we had small miracles number 9 we have uh, scales and sensibility at number 8 we have mysterious ways by abby evans so the synopsis sounds good but I don't have a clear idea as to what the book is gonna be about. You can hear the bike outside, I'm so sorry, and also the <laughs> pressure cooker CD. <laughs> anyway, I'm not filming, you know, at the dead of the night because I'm too tired. I had college today. So let's come back to the book. So Mysterious Ways is something about, uh, you know, it's this matriarchal society with uh, queer normative relationships uh, and all that and here the main character is the commander of this uh, city guard thing sort of thing and she kind of becomes jaded with how the goddess works and how everyone tells her that the goddess works in mysterious ways and then the synopsis kind of becomes vague and hand wavy and all that so i'm kind of curious to know what happens but i'm also kind of not interested to see because it's not catching it's not grabbing my attention so yeah that's mysterious ways at number 
uh, 1098 at number 8 i don't know how to count <laughs> so next at number 7 we have the 13th hour by trudy skies so this is something called a gas lamp fantasy which at first i thought it was a steampunk fantasy but then i saw that it's a gas lamp fantasy i don't know what a gas lamp fantasy is like how it differs from a steampunk fantasy and what are the characteristics of a gas lamp fantasy i have no idea and for some reason it does not like steampunk or gas lamp or anything something like that it does not really call to me for some reason like i'm pretty meh about it the synopsis also sounds uh, generic it's not very unique and all the people are like you know the last sentence of the synopsis is awesome i didn't find that to be that awesome so at number 7 we have the 13th hour by trudy skies next at number 6 which might come as a surprise is the umbrella storm by alec hudson so many people have the umbrella storm at you know the top 3 of the list or something like that and i have it at number 6 that's because again the synopsis it does not give me anything to work with i don't find it to be that appealing it does not catch my eye it sounds very generic epic fantasy uh, kind of a book and i'm kind of tired of you know generic epic fantasy and although this book might uh, surprise me and become one of my favorites but uh, yeah i don't know i have very mixed feelings about this book based on the synopsis the cover is awesome i mean i'll put up the covers if i can and the cover is really awesome but the cover is also giving me you know generic epic fantasy and uh, yeah i'm just not in the mood for something like that like who knows maybe uh, by the time i get to the book my mood might change and i might really enjoy it so at number 6 we have the umbrella storm next we have at number 5 tethered spirits by t a hernandez and this one it follows a few characters and it sounds a little young and that's why i'm kind of curious as to you know how it's gonna work out so i it's been a while since i've read ya and i feel like this might surprise me and okay so i'm saying the same thing over and over again but basically i'm going into these books expecting the best i'm thinking that these might turn out to be although these might not sound appealing to me at first but i hope that these might you know really work out for me so that is tethered spirits next we have miss purses pocket guide to the care and feeding of british dragons by quenby olson so this one is a mouthful and it sounds amazing although it sounds very similar to house in the cerulean sea but i have heard really good things about it and for some reason like although i kind of you know knocked on scales and sensibility uh because it had a dragon and it was a regency romance thing uh kind of a book and i was like you know it's going to be too cute see and too twee and whimsical and all that and i don't jive with all those things this one from the name itself and from the cover it seems like it's going to be everything i hate but for some reason i'm like this might turn out to be something i really like this might turn out to be the next legends and lattes and if you don't know i really like i loved legends and lattes i was planning to reread it this month but uh, it's not going to happen because of my exams so uh, i hope that miss purses pocket guide to dragons is going to be one of my favorites i have really high hopes that i really because of the cover and the name and everything i really want to get to it like right now and also i follow the author on uh, twitter and she is really funny and i it 
you know her sense of humor it goes with my sense of humor and i have a feeling that i'm going to end up loving the book so we have at number 4 uh miss purse's pocket guide to the care and feeding of british dragons so at number 3 we have fire of the four bears by la buck so this one it sounds like it's going to have talking animals <laughs> and that's what sold me <laughs> and also i'm seeing really good reviews of the book uh so <laughs> talking animals really good reviews I'm sold. I'm like this is going to be one of my favorites. So, I might be wrong. Uh I mean, from what I remember of the synopsis, it seems like you know there are creatures which look like animals but are kind of like humans, so humanoid animals. Uh and yeah, I mean <laughs> that's what I basically remember from the synopsis like everything is blank. only talking animals <laughs> yeah and next we have at number 2 which might come as a surprise because people have had it at the you know last 3 or 4 of the list the lower 3 or 4 of the list and this is a song for the void by andrew c piazza so the caveat with this book is that it might not be a fantasy the cover the cover is so awesome and the synopsis it sounds so good so it's about you know after the opium war with china british uh, navy is kind of hunting down pirates in the south china sea is it south south china sea some sea near china <laughs> China is a neighbor and I don't know anything about China the geography the history I know nothing so there the navy this uh, ship who is hunting down pirates they kind of encounter this horror this cosmic horror so that is basically it and from the review i read i have a feeling that this might not be fantasy as we know it like the typical fantasy sorcery and sorcery kind of a thing it's not going to be like that it's going to be a horror i have a feeling anyway let's see but the synopsis it sounds like amazing it sounds too good and i have a thing for historical fantasy with horror elements like i like my horror to take place in a historical setting so this book seems to be written for me and although i don't know anything about the opium war <laughs> you know that time period of history in that location uh i have a feeling that i'm really going to like this book like if i don't like this book i'll be really really disappointed but i have a feeling that i like this book i'll in fact love this book so anyway if i <laughs> don't if i hate this book i'll come back <laughs> and i'll eat my words at first place we have this is not a surprise a touch of light by thego abdullah so i've been seeing this book everywhere like everywhere and before even you know this uh, finalist thing started happening so alan from library of alexandria he kind of hyped up the book and since then everyone and the mother has been reading the book and uh, apparently it's really good and also the synopsis it sounds amazing to me so it's about uh, two different religions with opposing ideologies and how these different povs like these different people uh they interact with each other and the religion and all that so basically and it has griffins from what i heard so i mean always a plus you know magical creatures so that is a touch of light and now we come to the end of the video i mean to tell you a secret i have already read one book and uh, almost at the end of another book so that might have you know might have influenced this list 
I mean, I'm biased. <laughs> so, I mean, it's human nature to be biased. You know, bias is a human characteristic. And you don't need to be ashamed of, you know, having biases. So, anyway, uh, this is not a blind prediction. This is, I kind of have an idea about few a couple of the books and that's how i made the list so i will uh, post my reviews very soon and yeah i hope you guys like this video comment down below which one you guys think will be your favorite and which one you are kind of surprised to see you know uh, at the position in at that specific position in my list like maybe a book that is lower than you thought it would be a book that is higher than you thought it would be so yeah comment down below so uh i'll see you guys in the next one bye